Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, maybe you've heard of the country music singer Alan Jackson. Got familiar with a number of his songs when I was a vicar in Georgia. The one that I got to thinking about this week is called Living on Love. It's about a man and his wife who really don't have much of anything to their name, but they're satisfied with what they do have because they have everything they really need, and that's their love for each other. And that got me thinking about our sermon text for today. Abram, as he was still known back in those days, probably really could have sympathized with that song, but maybe not so much about his relationship with his wife, more so about his relationship with his God. Abram was really a pretty well-to-do herdsman who lived in Haran with all the rest of his extended family. Until one day, God came to him and told him to give it all up. This is what he said. Leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. That is, leave everything you've ever known and start walking southwest. Just trust me. Yes, Abram really did need to be living on love. Living on love for his Lord. Because he sure didn't have much else to go on right then. But just as that kind of love was enough for the man and his wife in that song, God's love and promises were more than enough for Abram. And they are still more than enough for us today. So here's a verse from that song I want you to think about first off. It sounds simple, that's what you're thinking, but love can walk through fire without blinking. It doesn't take much when you get enough living on love. Now, I can just imagine Abram hearing that song and nodding along and saying amen to that. It's hard for us to even totally comprehend just how true it is how God asked Abram to walk through fire, so to speak, but this sort of thing just was not done in those days. People stayed close to their families. They really had no reason to travel. There were no other jobs to take in other cities and countries. And for the most part, it was very uncommon even to conduct business outside of your own little community. People stayed put. They built a home and they died in the same place they were born. That way you made sure that your family had a solid support structure. So that meant to leave home was to forsake your family and to leave them very vulnerable. And maybe even more so, it was true that it left you very vulnerable because there you were out there all alone. And that's really something for us to think about when we consider what God asked Abram to do. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. So Abram left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram was not a young man by any means anymore, and this was not just, see you later, I'll write a call. This was goodbye forever to all of his people and his homeland. Not to mention the place God sent Abram to was hundreds of miles away that might have been months of traveling by foot. There were no good roads, no easy sources of food or drink or lodging. There were no governments to keep peace and safety. And so the possibility was very real that Abram and his whole caravan might not have made it where they were going unscathed. And then, of course, it wasn't like there was a welcome party waiting to receive them when they got there either. No, Abram actually found out when he got to the place God had sent him, it really wasn't very welcoming at all. As the story says, Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. All Abram found when he arrived in Canaan 
was rampant idolatry. Usually that's what those great trees were set aside for. They were popular sites for idol worship. And he found cities full of people who probably weren't too keen on just packing up and leaving to accommodate him. And so that meant that at the very least they would have been suspicious of Abram's arrival and at the very most they might have tried to relieve him of his possessions and maybe even take his life. That meant that Abram, as long as he lived in Canaan, would never really have a place of his own. But for the rest of his life, and even on into the foreseeable future, he and his people would be nomads who wandered around that land without any place to lay their head. So think about this from Abram's perspective. A comfortable life in Haran, very comfortable, among his family and the people who loved him versus a hard and nomadic life in Canaan among people who probably did not want him. Doesn't seem like it's much of a choice, does it? Outwardly, it makes a lot more sense to stay. Leaving would have come at a tremendous price. But for Abram, there was another factor that really tipped the scales. And for him, it wasn't even close. This was his Lord. This was his Savior who told him to pack up and go to Canaan, who told him that he would bless him, who told him to trust him. And so for Abram, no, it it really was not that much of a choice. Abram packed up and he went because he was willing to forsake everything else, leave his family and everything he knew and look forward to the better things God had for him Just living on the Lord's love. You see, God's love and promises meant more to Abram than anything else this world could ever offer him. And who could blame him? You remember what the Lord promised him? I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Now those are some pretty great promises as they are. But what's even greater is that God did even more for Abram than he even promised. And that's something for us to remember too. Our God, he doesn't deal with us primarily in demands. He deals with us most of all in love and promises. And he gives us more than we could ever hope Or expect. That's what Abram found out back then. That's what we'll find out one day too. By God's promise, Abram and his whole caravan were blessed on their journey to Canaan with protection and success. By God's promise, Abram and his wife Sarai, who for most of their lives were barren, Until 25 years later, they were blessed with the birth of their son Isaac, grew into a nation of unmatched blessings and of over 2 million people in only around 600 years. By God's promise, Abram, by the end of his life, grew to be as wealthy and powerful and respected and blessed as anyone in Canaan. By God's promise, Abram, became Abraham, the father of many nations, the friend of God, and the father of all believers. By God's promise and grace, Abram was a blessing to everyone around by helping and protecting them with his generosity, with his sword, and even especially with his prayers all throughout his lifetime. By God's promise, Abram was a prophet who proclaimed the word of the Lord and brought God's richest spiritual blessings to everyone who listened to his message. And by God's promise, Abram believed that one day his descendants would no longer be nomads in Canaan, but would one day call that land their very own home. Every promise God made to Abram, he followed through on in greater ways than Abram could ever have imagined, deepening his faith and even making his blessings overflow onto others. But even all those great blessings, they paled in comparison to the Lord's greatest promise to Abram and even to us. 
It was the one that meant the most to Abram, and it is certainly the one that means the most to us too. All those great blessings about Abram's life and the nation of Israel that would grow out of his household, they cannot compare to this one. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Now this wasn't just some earthly blessing meant to improve our quality of life like the wheel or, or the light bulb. You know, the promise God made to Abram, he brought blessings through Abram into this world that have effects beyond this world and even into eternity. God promised that through Abram's line, he would bring our Savior Jesus Christ into this world to take away our sins and bring salvation to humanity. The blessing God promised through Abram was the blessing of eternal life. And so now here's, the, here's what that means for you now through that same faith in Jesus that Abram had. You are a part of that great nation of believers of all times and places that will one day gather in our own promised land of heaven. By holy baptism, you bear the name that is above all other names, Christian. And you bear the honor of being a blood-bought child of God who has a mansion waiting for you in paradise one day. You will be blessed with everything you need to care for your bodies and lives in this world. You will be a blessing to everyone around you who reflects Christ's love and will share your faith in Jesus Christ, your hope for heaven, with anyone who will hear. And finally, one day you will, like Abram, leave this world where you are but a stranger and a nomad, and you will be welcomed by your Savior into your heavenly home where you belong forever. So here's another verse of that song that I want us to think about. He can't see anymore. She can barely sweep the floor. Hand in hand they'll walk through that door. Just living on love. You know, that's what God asks us to do in this world. Just live on his love. Take his hand and follow him wherever he leads because we know that whatever he has in store, it is so much better for us in the next. As long as Abram's faith was focused on the Lord's loving promises, he found the, the spiritual strength to sacrifice anything necessary to solidify his relationship with God. And that same source of strength is still available to every one of us today through his word and through faith in Jesus Christ. These last few weeks... We have been focusing on warnings God gives us about the difficulties of the Christian life. But in every case, we have seen that God's blessings and promises far outweigh any burdens or crosses he might ask us to carry along the way. We all know what our own challenges are to our spiritual lives and having stronger relationships with God. So give careful thought to your lives. But most of all, be like Abram. Live on love, God's love, because he has our backs and he will not do us wrong. The life of faith certainly is not for the faint of heart, but remember who it is that we follow. We follow a Savior who carried his cross for us and for our salvation, and remembering his love and promises and blessings leads us to follow him at any cost. Everything he has promised, he will do and more. So do like Abram. Follow him. Trust in him. And then worship him. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh,